Let us turn our BBK books to page 171 in the old book, 171 in the old book. In the new book is page 159, page 159 in the new book. Okay, 171 or 159. Now let us turn to God in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for safe journeys to thy house. Thank you that we can come to worship you, the living God. And Father, we ask that you again be merciful to cleanse us and wash us of all our sins. As we gather before you, we pray that you use BBK to strengthen our understanding of your word, strengthen our understanding of the Christian faith, that we will not be movable in this world where Satan continues to deceive. Father, we pray also that you um, not only grant us understanding, but grant to us conviction of hearts to live our lives according to thy word. So be with us, we pray. Strengthen your church through these BBK lessons. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, so three distinctives of why we are Bible Presbyterians. For those who are seeking membership, you must understand what do Bible Presbyterian stand for. Um, and for those of you who have been members for a long time, what does it mean? Why are we Bible Presbyterians? You must be clear in your heart and mind. Don't just, oh, well, I'm just part of this church, that's all. Right? So convictions are important. What are the three? Page 171. We've covered um, why we moved out of the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. The Orthodox Presbyterian Church um, and the Bible Presbyterian um, Church differs in these three areas. All right? So, we support all missionaries as long as they are fundamentalists. Um, I think we want to also clarify here, because today fundamentalists are very loosely used. So, fundamentalists um, that are separatists, right? You add that are separatists. Hmm? that are separatist. So, it is elaborated on page 172. Right? Look at the last paragraph, right? It says, this movement is worldwide fellowship. And it says, um, we are referring to Bible-believing fundamentalist Christians and allied bodies who take an uncompromising separated stand for the Word and for His testimony. So, we must define it very clearly. <clears throat> because many churches say we are fundamentalists. But they continue to work with um, people that attack the Word of God. So we, we separate from this. So with respect to the missionaries, the same. Then pre-meal. <clears throat> we believe that the Lord Jesus will come and reign 1,000 years on earth. So that is the difference between us and Presbyterians. So that is a very major difference. Now we come to the third one. Total abstinence. So you must understand and you must know. Um, why we believe in total abstinence. Total abstinence here, of course, refers to drinking alcoholic beverages, right? OPC maintains that um, it is fine to allow social drinking, but um, Carl McIntyre and his um, um, followers believe very clearly that scriptures does not teach um, social drinking, but the Bible teaches total abstinence. Now, I, before I explain why we believe in this from the Bible, I want us to know this is not a unique thing to Bible Presbyterians only. There are Baptists, Presbyterians, Methodists, and so on. There are other Christians and other churches that believe in total abstinence, that the Bible teaches we do not drink anything that is what is classified as wine, especially today's wine. Okay, so now why do we believe that? Why do we believe that? Because there are Bible verses that makes it very clear. Now let us turn to Proverbs 23, 31. Proverbs 23, 31. Proverbs chapter 23, 
31. Let's read um, together one, two, reading. Look not thou upon wine when it is red, when it giveth its colour in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Now, God says don't look at don't even look at this kind of wine. What is this kind of wine? By the way, we have a whole series covered in you, on YouTube in our website, so you can go and um, look at it. But I'll, I must explain at BBK certain key points to help you understand why we take this stand. Now, the cup, when, when it is red, when it giveth its colour in the cup. This is talking about fermented wine. Means they are alcoholic alcoholic wine. God says when it comes to alcoholic wine, don't even look at it. Don't even look at it means it is total abstinence. Don't even look at it, does not even reach, don't touch it. In other words, avoid it completely. Have nothing to do with alcoholic beverages, fermented beverages. Nothing to do with it. So total abstinence. Now the thing is this, then they will say, well, no, the Bible allows that. In fact, God asked for wine. Let's turn to Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14, 26. Deuteronomy 14, verse 26. Shall we read together? Reading. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drinks, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. So he said, they say, well, here God says, well, it is fine for you to go buy oxen, sheep that you want to eat, and for wine and for strong drink. So they say, well, God allows that. In fact, in other parts of the Bible, it is also mentioned, for example, in Numbers, God said, offer me, offer me, bring wine offerings to me. So how do we understand this? Is it total abstinence or is, it, or is God fine with wine, alcoholic beverages? Which one? Now, first of all, is God a consistent God? God must be a consistent God. If God says, well, drink, don't drink. Drink, don't drink. God is not like us. Sometimes parents, do, don't do, don't do. The child gets confused. Do or don't do, right? Now, so is God for or against alcoholic beverages? Now, this is one thing that we have to understand this English word called wine. This English word called wine. The only way to understand this word wine translated in English that it can mean alcoholic or non-alcoholic is to understand it in its original languages. In Hebrew and Greek, the English word wine, especially in Hebrew, the original word can mean can be many different words. Many different words in Hebrew. Okay? And these words ranges from alcoholic, fermented uh, grape juice or other kind of juices, strong wine, can be from palm um, and all that, different kinds, to non-alcoholic. But in English, because it's a translation, they use the word wine. They use the word wine. Then you ask, wh why don't they clarify, use different words? Why not? So first of all, you must understand in the Bible, put aside what wine means today. We are reading the Bible. It can mean this or this. You cannot run away from that. Now, why only one English word wine? Why don't we say bring alcoholic drinks, bring non-alcoholic drinks and keep translating it like that? Why not? Why not? 
Remember the King James Bible is translated in a time where this word wine, the English word wine, has is always known as is always known to mean two things. It's always known to mean two things. Like I covered in the session, you have to realize that um, so the KJV is translated in the 1600s, right? In the 1600s. In the 1600s. Now, prior to that time, dictionaries, we are talking about dictionaries, English dictionaries, they, for example, in the mid 1700s, in the mid 1700s, all right, in the mid 1700s, the English dictionaries translate wine as grape juice. It can be grape juice or alcoholic drinks. All right, so at that time, when the KJV translators use this word wine, to them, it's a common way of saying thing. It can mean this, it can mean this. That is why they do not think of making the difference. Now, I give you an example. Well, let me finish first. Now, then, um, until the early 1800s, until the early 1800s, okay, actually, until the early 1800s, um, they still talk about non, dictionary still will include the definition of non-fermented grape juice. All right, they still classify the English word wine to mean non-fermented or fermented drinks. Um, now it is up to, now even in the mid 1800s, in the mid 1800s, they would still talk about it is expressed, means squeezed grape juice. They will still talk about it as express grape juice. It is only after this period that, that then they begin to say, translate wine because of society change. Wine as more as a fermented alcoholic drinks. The English word usage was changed because it's more common now is it possible that we use even today one word to mean different things possible for example the word drugs drugs you want to take drugs no she doesn't want to take drugs then mommy says you're sick let's go to the drug store and get you some drugs, right? Do you think mommy is asking, taking you to a house that sell, sell um, contraband and ask you to take um, ice? You don't know what that is? Of course, yeah, even, even she knows that, no, mommy can't be saying that. Even today, when we use the word drugs, and we translate the word drugs, in our minds, when I say, okay, people of God, you should not take drugs. It's, it, is, it is flu season, all right? Many of you are sick. Go see a doctor. Get some drugs. Do, you, do I need to keep translating for you? Uh, I'm talking about, not, I'm not talking about ice. Huh? I'm talking about antibiotics. I'm talking about Panadol. The doctor comes to give you an injury. I need to give you some drugs. What are you going to say? No! You will just know the context. So when the King James translators translate wine, they do not need to think of trying to translate alcoholic, non-alcoholic, because at that time, it's just like today I say drugs. No difference. People would know, the context will tell them. So why in the Bible, why when we read the English Bible, why is it that some places God says, don't even look at wine. Other places God says, Please bring me wine. Go and buy wine. Why do we read that in English today? Because when the King James translation was translated, the word wine is like the word we use drugs today. People who read it don't even need clarification. Understand that? Okay, so when they say, God says, bring me, don't even look at wine. 
In their mind, they will know it's the same as today. Don't even think of taking drugs. You are sick. Take some drugs. Don't even need to explain. I still use the same word. So when, when they read, buy, go and buy wine, go and drink wine, bring me wine, in their minds, they would never think that God is referring to alcoholic version of the word wine. Understand that? Okay? Hey, you all look very, very... Are you lost? Understand? Now, so the word in the English word just change. That is all. So we must know that God does forbid wine. Alcoholic wine. It's just like today... We forbid Christians to take, out, to take drugs, the kind that is contraband drugs. So does God forbid us to even look at alcoholic beverages? Yes. Yes. Now, I'll give you another word, for example. So please remember, in dictionaries, the word wine, as the King James translators use it, always could mean non-fermented. Always. Now, can you think of another word today that, that has not changed? People are still using it. Is the word called? Beer. Beer. Alright? Do you drink beer? Uh, army men, do you drink beer? Should Christians drink beer? I drink beer a few times a week. Really? A few times a week. Sometimes night time... Oh, Tasha, I need to go get some beer. Then I go to my fridge. Eh, fridge ran out of beer. So I go to the back, I pull apart the carton, and then I you know, open, put ice, I drink beer. Very often, right? Um, sometimes before I come for worship, I drink beer. <coughs> you don't believe me. So today I use the word beer. But I tell you, don't drink beer. <laughs> Do I use two words, the same word for two things? What beer? What beer can you think of? What beer can, what beer can you think of? Uh, Josiah, what beer can you think of? Tiger beer. Is it tiger beer here? I don't know. What beer, are you, what beer do you want to drink? What beer do you think I drink? <laughs> Root beer. <laughs> Root beer. Now, my favourite is the Australian one. Before I came to Australia, I already like to drink this. It's called? It's from Bundaberg. It's called what? Bundaberg. It's called ginger beer. Ginger beer. Ginger beer. Do I need to clarify this morning I drink I drank non-alcoholic beer? And you should not drink alcoholic. Do I need to say that? When I say uh, I get I go and get I went to get some Bundaberg beer. You already know. So when the King James translator say wine. Don't think that it is just today's wine and there's only one kind. Just like you won't think that beer means only one thing. Beer simply means the way they process a certain root of, of um, something. Like ginger, they process, it's the root, right? Ginger is a root, right? How they process ginger into a kind of drink that is called beer, alright? Is, is wine good for your stomach? Let me ask you. Paul says, Timothy, your stomach is not good. Go take some wine, correct? So they say, see, see the Bible says you can drink wine. Even pastors should drink wine if your stomach is no good. Whenever I have stomach problems, Sharon will say, go drink some beer. Because ginger beer works very well for my stomach discomfort. It's like magic potion. Alright? So, pastor, if you have some stomach problems, go drink some beer. Pastor Timothy, if you have some problem, go drink some wine. You don't have to say, Pastor, I just need to clarify, I'm not talking about tiger beer. You don't have to clarify to me. When Paul said, go drink some wine, you know some of the grape juice today? When you were young, when you were young, when she was young, when she has stomach problems, do you give her this particular brand of juice? There's a particular gram of juice called Welsh, is it? How do you spell it? 
It's a particular brand. It's very, very well known to mothers. I went to websites, mothering webs, mother, mothering, motherhood websites, and mothers will talk about, ah, my, stomach, my child's stomach has this problem. Some mothers will recommend, ah, there's this, there's this juice, this grape juice by this company. Right? So to them, juice, back then, is wine. They use the same word. Like today, I use drugs. Today, I use beer. It means two things. Does the Bible forbid us in drinking alcoholic wine? Proverbs 23, we read. God don't, did not even say don't drink. God said don't even look at things that are fermented. God never allowed His children to bring fermented things, right? You cannot have, un, you cannot have anything that is leavened. Anything that's leavened, leavened means means a certain process has happened in the thing and it's begin to decay, right? It begins to decay. God will never ask them, neither would the children of Israel when they hear, bring me wine, go buy wine. They would not think of bringing fermented juice to God because it, is, it will be considered a kind of decaying or decayed product. They're supposed to bring non-decaying, non-decayed products. So when God says, bring wine to me, offer this wine to me, offer this strong drink. Strong drinks are simply drinks that are made from non-grape kind of drinks. Thick, syrupy, non-fermented um, kind of um, liquid. It's very strong in content. Is honey very strong? It's very thick. It's a strong kind of drink. So God is referring to non-alcoholic. The people would not dare to bring alcoholic, fermented, decayed things to God. It will not occur to them. When I say, can you, can this Sunday, today is Father's Day, can you all please bring some beer? Ginger. Yeah, would you even, straight away, you know, our pastor must be talking about ginger beer. Pastor can't possibly be asking people to bring alcoholic beer. So when they translate, bring, when the KJV translated, they use the word wine, in those periods, it has always been the same way we use beer, the same way we use drugs today. They don't need to clarify. All right? So is total abstinence in the Bible? Absolutely. Is it just us believing it? Is it because you're Bible Presbyterian? No, many Christians believe it. Why? Because it's in the Bible. That is it. All right? That's all. So, this is one thing, the definition of the word, you have to know. Now, but there is a popular, um, a popular uh, argument um, that, that people use. Okay, you turn, um, turn to Philippians chapter 5, verse 18. Philippians 5, verse 18. Philippians 5 verse 18. Now let's read together. And and be not all right, Philipp, eh, Ephesians 5 18. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ephesians 5 18. I'm drunk. <laughs> Ephesians 5 18. Let's read together. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You see, so there are Christians who read this verse. There are Christians who read this verse and say that drinking wine is not the problem. You see, this verse says, be not drunk. So as long as you don't get drunk. Drunk is, ah, when drunk is excess, alright? Only when you get drunk then, oh, don't drink in excess. That is why Many Christians believe in this word called moderate drinking. Moderate drinking. Because moderate is opposite to excess. So as long as you don't get drunk, as long as it's not in excess, Paul says it's okay. Just don't get drunk. That's all. Okay, by the way, you know why I'm explaining this in detail, right? Not because I like to explain this. I explain this in detail because this is what we teach. You have to understand why we teach this. Don't simply say, because we are BP, that's why we cannot drink wine. I think I want to join um, other church because I want to drink wine. 
We are just simply explaining to you what God says. Now, so, <coughs> access. What does this word access mean? Too much. What does the word wine mean? Alcoholic. Not necessary, we learn today. Not necessary, right? The word wine in KJV, the underlying Hebrew words, there are more than 10 different words. Can be alcoholic, can be non alcoholic. So, what is this word excess? So, today's English, you're right, today's English means too much. We must go to the original word. You agree? We must go to the original word. The original word means proliferation, means, means it is, it is a, a behavior that is um, sinful. I use a simple word. The Greek word does not mean too much. The Greek word means behavior that is sinful. You must, you cannot argue with the original meaning of what God is saying. Excess, drinking, so look at this verse. Be not drunk with wine. Be not drunk with wine because it is sinful behavior. God is not saying if you drink little bit or too much. God is simply saying drunkenness is sinful behavior. Alright? Before I forget. Drunkenness is sinful behavior. Do you want proof? Please turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Now, let's read from verses 2 to 4. First Peter chapter 4, verses 2 to 4. Shall we read together? First Peter chapter 2 to 4. Okay, First Peter chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. Let's read together. That no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past, our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. You see, oh, you see last time, as before you were saved, you had too much wine. Is that what it means? Let's read further. Wherein, verse 4, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Now you see the word, there is excess of wine, correct? Excess of wine, you see that? And then there is another phrase that's called excess of what? Excess of riot, correct? One is excess of wine, one is excess of riot, okay? Yeah, you're following now. Today, to kind of like everybody's very, very uh, low, is it? Didn't take enough drugs this morning? Yeah. So, uh, then if we interpret excess of wine means do, as long as you don't drink too much wine. Yeah? Then we have to interpret as long as you don't riot too much. Should Christian riot at all? Should Christian live a life of rioting at all? Little bit, okay. You agree? No. Little bit wine, okay. Then you have to interpret little rioting is okay. This word in the English usage, we have to understand, is sinful behavior of wine. Sinful behavior of drinking alcoholic beverage. Sinful behavior of a riotous life. This, God is not saying too much or too little. God is describing wine drinking, alcoholic wine drinking, is behavior that is sinful. God is describing riotous living, uh, behaviors that are sinful. Can you understand that? 
So you must not understand this word access as what only today, too much. You have to go back to the original languages. Just like you cannot ex- understand the word wine simply means what it means today. The one across the road, the shop that sells that kind of bottled drinks. You cannot interpret it as just that. You have to interpret what God says based on the word that God used. Okay? So remember that. Are we wrong to say total abstinence when God says only if excess? Drunkenness is a sinful behavior. That's all Paul is saying. He's not saying don't drink too much. Excess of wine is a sinful behavior. God is not saying don't drink too much. Excess of riot. Rioting is a sinful behavior. That's it. Don't have anything to do with it. That's all. All right. So be clear. We are teaching biblical interpretation of scriptures, not what we like to do. We would like to teach you. Now, so what is drink? What is drinking? What is drunk? Drunk. What is drunk? Actually, what is drunk? Okay, ask pharmacist. What do you define as drunk? Intoxicated. How drunk is drunk? So if, you, if we interpret, the, the Bible says you can drink as long as you don't get drunk. So how to define drunk? <coughs> certain amount. Certain amount. What is the amount? What is the amount? What do you think should be the amount? Uh, let me ask. Justin, what do you think should be the amount? Are you at uh, eligible drinking age? Not yet. Uh. All right. So, what is the amount? Zero. 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 Anything more than zero is drunk. So that's Justin's definition. Means Justin is total abstinence. If a Christian interpret as as long as you don't get drunk, then we have to ask what is drunk, right? What is drunk? If you want to interpret that way, is it Justin's definition? Not drunk means zero, or one cup, slightly happy. Not drunk yet, I'm just happy, I'm not drunk. Oh, that's maybe 0.1. Oh, yeah, 0.09. That is not drunk. So who defines drunk? Christians? Even the world has more sense than Christian. Do you know the world defines not drunk as zero. Do you believe? Australia defines not drunk as zero alcohol. Anyone that drives a public bus, anyone that operates heavy vehicles, anyone that drive, that operates equipment that involves public, you must not be intoxicated. You must not be intoxicated by the government and many countries' government who are wiser and more sensible than Christian, defined as zero. You know how many pilots recently got lost their job? What is the pilot's level of... Okay, I'm a Christian pilot. You know, my religion say that as long as I don't get drunk, it's okay to drink wine. Alright, so I should be able to pilot the plane. Pilot zero. That is the meaning of not drunk. Zero. Even the world understands total abstinence. Alright, so do not think it is a a Bible Presbyterian thing. God says don't even look. I asked a young Christian after the session. I said, what do you mean? What, What do you think? What is more stringent? Don't drink alcoholic beverages or don't look at alcoholic beverages which one Aaron which one do you think don't look is more stringent or don't drink alcoholic beverage which one is more stringent don't look right don't even look don't even look means you don't even go near it you ignore it you go past it so God calls for total abstinence you must remember that not BPCWA not BP movement The Bible calls for it. The Word itself tells us. From today onwards, do not think that English word used there, excess, means today too much. Excess means a sinful behavior, proliferate, proliferate, or something, right? So it is a, a, a sinful behavior. God says drinking alcoholic beverages is a sinful behavior. Can I say, can I say drinking beer is a sinful behavior? 
Can I say that? Hey, can I say drinking beer is a sinful behavior? Not totally. Depends on what? Depends on what beer, correct? So when God says drinking wine is a sinful behavior, because someone asks, can we say that drinking wine is sin? Can we say drinking wine is sin? Not totally. If the wine you're talking about and you want to use the old English word wine means grape juice, of course not. But, it, but did God say wine is a sinful behavior? I say again, did God say that wine is a sinful behavior? Did God say rioting is a sinful behavior? Yes, but what wine? Alcoholic wine, okay? Alright, so I hope that this um, makes it clear. I actually have five minutes, so can I take any question? Anyone? Yes. Thank you, the, the word fermentation. Mm. Fermentation is from yeast. So what about the bow that we eat, the bread that we eat? Alright, so what about fermentation that has yeast, that has um, some decay, bow, uh, bread even? Do you realize that even orange juice has traces of, of alcohol or fermentation that will occur. Traces. All right? So when God says the wine is that which intoxicates. Right? So how much orange juice do you need to drink to get drunk? You will never get drunk in drinking um, orange juice. Every kind, in fact, most food product will have some fermentation in it. Okay? So, definitely God is not talking about that because you can never get drunk on that. But the kind of fermentation that occurs in grape juice, there is pure grape juice in Woolworth and there is wine bottle in Woolworth. Both has traces of fermentation. One has high, the other has low. Not negl is negligible. That's why even in Australia and many and other in the world, the government classify their drinks. They classify any liquid thing that they sell in a supermarket. You are expected to abide by their percentage. Above a certain percentage, you must put it in the area that is known and is labelled and the bottle will be labelled, this intoxicates. You must declare. You don't need to put orange juice. You don't need to put grape juice. Do you know that now Kikoman, you know Kikoman sauce? Kikoman sauce has been declared as alcoholic by the government. Do you realise that? Because government know that certain, above a certain percentage in excess, it can intoxicate. And they'll say, please make it clear to people. Do you know <coughs> mouthwash? Hmm? This morning I use mouthwash. It can intoxicate. It can also. But do you buy mouthwash to drink to intoxicate yourself? Do you? No. People do. People do. That is why the government have to regulate it. People do. When they have no access to what You know people can be so alcoholic and so desperate, you read of real life stories. They go and drink this just to get the feeling. That is real. Do you know that, uh, what's the medicine I always buy, uh, 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 Sujin? That needs driver's license? Suda. Suda what? Suda. Pseudo. Ephedrine. I can't pronounce it, but I eat it. Now, Sudafed, another in Singapore we call Sudafed. When you have a cold, bad congestion, there are two kinds of Sudafed. One over the counter, you can buy and eat to your heart's delight. The other kind, you need to produce your driving license, you need to have records and all that thing before you can buy it because this drug, this drug, in, they can buy it and make it into the kind of drug that you should not take. That's why it's controlled. All right, so good question. Everything is, has some fermentation in it. It is the kind that can intoxicate us that God says, do not look at it.
Okay, so in fact, even cooking, we cover all that in the session. You can go back and watch the YouTube. What about cooking wine and all that things? All right, so we cover all those. God is not talking about those things. God is talking about those that we sell in the drugstore you buy to enjoy, to drink, to get a bit tipsy. God is talking about that. Total abstinence. Otherwise, we cannot cook with kikoman from now onwards. We cannot drink orange juice from now onwards. Not that. All right, so I hope you understand the few words. Wine, excess, and what kind we are talking about. Okay, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray that as we understand your word, Lord, it will guide us and help us to live in a way that would not cause us to fall into sin. Prepare our hearts for worship, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me one minute. Sorry, give me one minute. Give me one minute. Is wine bad? Wine has destroyed many families. You read many news. People who are perfectly normal. A girl just died in, I can't remember, somewhere in Australia. She argued with the Uber driver. I do not want to put on my seatbelt. I do not want to put on my seatbelt. And then she just opened the door, got down and got killed by a car. Just few, yesterday, I think. And there are people who, parents said, perfectly, very good, obedient child. Goes to Bali, become someone that will break up things, kill people and all that. Unimaginable. Wine, intoxicating wine changes you to another person. Understand that. That's why God says, don't even touch it. It destroys family. But let me ask you, is that the reason why a Christian don't drink? Well, because wine is bad. It destroys family. Is that the reason? No, we don't drink because God says don't drink. Why does God say don't drink? Because you know this kind of drink has this kind of effect. Not simply because the, of the effects. Because some people say, no, don't worry, I can drink, drink, drink. And some people can drink a lot and not, not become drunk. So if I don't become drunk, I can drink? It has nothing to do with that. It's God's command. What is sin? Contravening God's command. Alright? So, thank you. See you next week.